Tesla's Model 2 production line just landed, and 200 parts have vanished. Not downsized, gone. Single aluminum castings are replacing entire body sections that used to require welding, stamping, and dozens of components. Assembly time drops from 30 hours to under 10. But here's the shock nobody saw coming. This isn't about making cars cheaper. It's about making them simpler to own. Fewer parts mean fewer failures, lower repairs, and maintenance savings exceeding $12,000 over a decade. So what's truly shocking? Let's dive right in. Here's what's actually happening on Tesla's factory floor right now. Traditional compact cars, your Corollas, your Civics, require between 30 and 40 labor hours to build. That's stamping, welding, painting, wiring, assembly, inspection. Tesla's Model 2 platform? Industry analysts are reporting targets under 10 hours. Some insiders whisper it's closer to 7 once production stabilizes. Think about that gap. 30 hours down to 7. That's not efficiency improvement. That's industrial demolition. But how do you cut 23 hours of labor without cutting quality? The answer is brutal simplicity. Eliminate the parts that require those hours in the first place. Reports indicate 200 to 300 individual parts removed from the body structure alone. Not redesigned, removed. So here's the question nobody's asking. If you can eliminate 200 parts and the car still works, were those parts ever necessary? Let's get specific about what structural casting actually means. Traditional car bodies are built like Lego sets, hundreds of stamped steel panels, welded together, sealed against corrosion, inspected for gaps. The Model Y uses large aluminum castings for the rear underbody. One piece, one supplier, one quality check. That single casting replaced 70 individual components. Model 2 takes this further. Tesla's Giga Press technology produces these massive components in 90 seconds. Compare that to stamping and welding 70 parts, which takes hours and requires multiple workstations, dozens of workers, and quality inspections at every step. Here's where it gets interesting. Every eliminated part doesn't just save material cost. It removes assembly steps, fasteners, adhesives, and most importantly, failure points. A welded joint can corrode. A bolted connection can loosen. A casting? It's a single piece of aluminum. No joints, no welds, no corrosion points waiting to appear after five winters of road salt. Industry data suggests a single large casting can cost less to produce than the 70-plus components it replaces, even accounting for expensive gigapress machinery. Why? You've eliminated tooling expenses for 70 separate parts, logistics for 70 suppliers, inventory management for 70 SKUs, and quality control for 70 potential defects. What's shocking isn't that Tesla figured this out. It's that the technology isn't new. The machinery exists. The materials are standard. Legacy automakers could do this tomorrow. But retooling an existing factory costs billions, and you're asking companies to abandon assembly processes they've spent decades optimizing. Tesla built this from scratch with no legacy infrastructure to protect and no supplier relationships locked in through long-term agreements. Model 2 is expected to use a 40 to 50 kilowatt hour pack, significantly smaller than the 60 to 75 kilowatt hour packs in Model 3 and Model Y. Current industry estimates put battery pack costs at 90 to 110 dollars per kilowatt hour. A 45 kilowatt hour pack at $100 per kilowatt hour equals $4,500. But here's what the numbers don't show. Battery costs have been falling roughly 15% annually for the past decade. 
By the time Model 2 hits volume production in late 2025 or 2026, we could be looking at $80 per kilowatt hour. That drops the pack cost to $3,600. Suddenly, the battery isn't the cost constraint anymore. Think about what that means. For years, batteries were the excuse for why EVs cost more than gas cars. When batteries become cheap, that entire narrative collapses. Legacy automakers planned their EV strategies around batteries staying expensive through 2030. What happens when that assumption breaks five years early? At a fully burdened labor cost of $60 per hour, reducing assembly time by 20 hours saves $1,200 per vehicle. Multiply that by 1 million vehicles annually, and you're looking at $1.2 billion in labor savings every single year. But Tesla's parallel assembly approach does something more valuable than just reducing hours. It eliminates bottlenecks. Traditional assembly lines move vehicles through sequential stations. If one station slows down, the entire line slows down. Tesla builds front castings, rear castings, battery packs, and interior modules simultaneously in separate areas, then brings them together for final integration. If Tesla can build a car in seven hours with parallel assembly, while Toyota needs 30 hours with sequential assembly, they're not just competing on price. They're operating in a completely different manufacturing paradigm with structural cost advantages that can't be matched without rebuilding factories from scratch. Let's build the cost from the ground up. Battery pack, $4,500. Body structure with castings, $3,000. Labor at 10 hours, $600. Motors and electronics, $1,500. Interior, glass, wheels, $4,000. Assembly overhead, $2,000. Total direct costs. $15,600. Apply a 25% margin for profit, R&D, and warranty reserves, and you land at $19,500 manufacturing cost with healthy margins. A retail price of $25,000? Absolutely achievable. Launch price of $27,500? Conservative. But here's the strategic twist. Tesla doesn't need to hit $25,000 to win. They need to hit $27,500 and watch competitors try to match them with 30-hour assembly times. After federal EV incentives of $7,500, a $27,500 Model 2 effectively costs $20,000. You're comparing a $20,000 EV with software updates and minimal maintenance to a $22,000 Corolla that needs service every 5,000 miles. That's not competition. That's disruption. A typical compact car averaging 30 miles per gallon burns 333 gallons annually at 10,000 miles per year. At $3.50 per gallon, that's $1,165 yearly in fuel. Over 10 years, $11,650. Model 2's expected efficiency is 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Same 10,000 miles needs 2,850 kilowatt hours annually. At 15 cents per kilowatt hour, you're paying $427 yearly. Over 10 years, $4,270. Fuel savings alone. $7,380. But production simplification creates a second savings layer. No engine means no oil changes. No transmission means no fluid services. No exhaust system means no catalytic converter replacements. Industry data shows gas vehicles averaging $800 to $1,200 annually in maintenance as they age. Tesla maintenance, tire rotations, brake fluid, cabin filters, maybe $200 to $300 annually. Over 10 years, 
maintenance savings reach $5,000 to $7,000. Combined with fuel savings, you're looking at $13,380 in total cost reduction over a decade. That's enough to buy another used car or fund a year of college. Here's the uncomfortable question. Is removing 200 parts brilliant engineering or cost-cutting that'll bite buyers later? Those eliminated components aren't safety systems. They're redundant body panels, brackets, fasteners, and structural reinforcements that only exist because traditional manufacturing requires them. A single casting eliminates that complexity, but it also eliminates repair flexibility. If one bracket fails in a traditional car, you replace that part. If a casting cracks, you're replacing a much larger component. Tesla's betting that fewer parts mean fewer failures overall. A traditional body with 300 components has 300 potential failure points. A casting-based body with 100 components has 100 failure points. Even if repairing one casting costs three times more, you're still ahead on total ownership costs if failures are less frequent. Early Model Y data supports this. We're not seeing widespread casting failures in vehicles approaching four years old. Stop thinking about Model 2 as just another EV. This is Tesla stress testing a manufacturing philosophy that reshapes how vehicles are built. If it works, every Tesla built after this gets cheaper to produce. The production line isn't just building Model 2, it's building the template for everything Tesla makes for the next decade. Here's the reality check. The shocking part isn't that 200 parts disappeared. It's that those parts were there in the first place, adding cost, complexity, and failure points to every car ever built. Tesla didn't innovate revolutionary technology. They simply asked why the problem existed and had the freedom to act on the answer without legacy constraints. We're watching manufacturing orthodoxy get questioned in real time with real production data. And the old answers aren't holding up. So here's what the 200 eliminated parts actually reveal. Tesla just proved you can build a car in seven hours instead of 30 and still maintain quality. That's not innovation. That's an industrial reset. Every automaker now faces a brutal choice. Spend billions retooling factories to match this efficiency or accept permanent cost disadvantages that make competing impossible. The $25,000 price point isn't the story. The story is what happens when Tesla applies this manufacturing template to every vehicle they build next. Model 3, refresh, Cybertruck scaling, future compact models. Each one gets simpler, cheaper, faster to produce. The learning curve only accelerates from here. And this is just Tesla. What happens when Chinese automakers adopt structural casting at even lower labor costs? We're looking at a global manufacturing revolution compressed into the next three years, not decades. What's your take? Will legacy automakers adapt fast enough? Or are we watching the beginning of an industrial extinction event? Drop your prediction in the comments. We read everyone, and your insights often shape future videos. If this breakdown gave you a different perspective on what's actually happening in EV manufacturing, hit that like button. It tells us you want more deep dive analysis like this. Subscribe to Tech Revolution and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next investigation into the manufacturing decisions reshaping the auto industry. We're tracking the Model 2 production ramp closely, and the data coming out over the next six months will be critical. The age of over-engineered cars just ended. You're watching it happen in real time. Thanks for being here, and we'll see you in the next one.